Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you the DJI Air 2S and I'm going to take some photographs of a rather boring tree, process them in reality capture and do a bit of retopology and trimming of the mesh and import it into Unreal 5 as a high poly mesh without a normal map. Now the reason why I bought this drone was because it has the 1 inch sensor and 20 megapixel stills which is an improvement on the previous drone that I had, the Mavic Air 2 and I will compare the the results of the photographs and the photogrammetry mesh in this video and explain a little bit about the process of photogrammetry. The first thing I did was just fly around this tree in a 360 degree loop and I used the POI or point of interest mode which is quite simple to activate. What I did was made sure that there was no obstacles or anything around me. The tree is about three and a half meters tall so I basically pick an area uh, press the POI button and choose the rotation speed and with the camera on pro mode and a fast shutter speed take some images around it in 360 degrees. I do the first pass and then I choose another pass and show you here in time lapse quickly taking images around it and then choose some further angles and edit out the photos that are being photobombed with my children. So the main thing really is just to make sure that you're in pro mode and you're using as low an ISO as possible and a high shutter speed. Now there is some people that do this by manually flying around it but point of interest mode is very fast for me and I didn't notice any significant or any blur at all in the images. So the next step is to switch to reality capture and I'm not going to explain how this works in too much detail because you might have seen my previous videos that show this but I go inputs here and input all the images that I used. I actually took about 230 but I'm only using 111 because on the DJI Air 2, I did the photogrammetry at a different time. It was in the winter and it was darker and I only had 111 images for that. So for the fair comparison, I'm using the same amount of images. The quality of the images on this are pretty good. I tried to fill the frame as much as possible. Sharp, uh, well colored, uh, no distortion, as I said, or any blurring. And as I say, I tried to cover all the different angles here. And I tried to make the images as similar as possible to the Air 2 results. So once that's done, you can go on to the alignment and you choose align images. That took about five to 10 minutes on my system. And the reconstruction I did at high detail, that took about just over two hours. And if I flip this over to 3D mode, I can show you the subsequent mesh that I got out of this. I've used this box to trim down my area and remove everything from outside of here. So I can put it on to the um, solid mode here hopefully and we can see some of the geometry that's been generated here. I then used the simplified tool to reduce the mesh to 10 million polygons. I built a texture at 4096 by 4096 Simplified tools here is basically a decimation. And then I exported the model. I think it cost me $1.27. Uh, $1 After that, I bring into ZBrush and I'll show you the mesh quickly and some retopology. Actually, first of all, I'll show you the project for the DJI Mavic Air 2, which I did last year in the winter. And just show you the quality of the images in this one. Now I did have to use a higher ISO for this but I used a lower shutter speed I believe and it was because it was a little darker. Both were taken on overcast days but for the Air 2S it was slightly brighter. That's why this is probably not a very fair comparison and I'm not going to get into videos again where I'm comparing these because they would have to be taken under very similar circumstances. But again with this one it's slightly less sharp, obviously less megapixels but still I think the camera does do some sharpening here or some color correction here and I didn't do these ones in RAW, I did the other ones in JPEG and RAW but for both of them I used the JPEG, I didn't go into Lightroom to modify the images but again trying to get all rounded, similar photos to the Air 2S and trying to keep the tree in the frame here. I actually got a little bit closer with the air shots than I did with the Air 2S which might have uh, impacted the results somewhat. Uh, but as I say, I took them on completely different days and completely different seasons, so I couldn't, I didn't have both drones at the same time. But let's have a quick look. Again, this was done on a high 
uh, align images and it was slightly faster with between 12 megapixel images and the export was uh, 87 cents I believe so very very affordable for both but once it's been done on the um, high reconstruction we can go into the 3D here and have a little look at the mesh here so still lots of detail a little less detail at the top here but that could maybe be uh, I mean, I did I did photograph all of it, but it's a little bit less detail now. I'll put the two meshes side by side in a moment, and we can see it. Uh, but certainly, with the texture applied on this one as well, it looks very impressive, very very usable from the Air Two as well. So, a quick comparison of the two photographs. This is a Mavic. Uh, Air 2 and as I said this was taken under slightly darker conditions both the images were overcast which is ideal for photogrammetry but it was a lot brighter and it was summer whenever I did the Air 2S so as a result this is ISO 400 and I used 1 over 100 which is probably a little bit slow for POI in hindsight I would have gone higher but I can't see any blur on these images they're still very very sharp and even the grass came out clearer on this one because the grass was shorter. And this is an example of the what we're getting from the Air 2S. I have slightly more detail in these parts and it just seems to be a bit brighter. But again, that's because they were ISO 100. That could have an impact. Again, this is the Air 2S. And again, here we have the Air 2. and the Air 2S. And finally one from above here we have at 100% the Air 2 100% the R2S. So here I have the resultant meshes exported from Reality Captures and OBJ. I used a simplified tool on both of them to get them down to 10 million polys. And I will show you the results at this one. So this is the R2S, and this is the R2. R2S. And let's just flip them around to the back. Air 2S. Air 2. And the Air 2. Some of the detail missing here for the Air 2 but that could have been to do with the fact that I may have gone a little higher with the Air 2S, but I did still take significant images of the ends of the trees and I could see more detail in the Air 2S image. So the next step was just to do some trimming of the mesh and some retopology. I usually do this in ZBrush or Blender and I've got plenty of videos which demonstrate this process in detail. The main reason for getting the retopology is if you import the mesh as is into Unreal, you get some pretty messy triangles. So from my experience, it's better to make a basic UV map and to do some retopology to get some quads and then project the detail from the higher resolution mesh onto the lower one for import into Unreal Engine. And onto Unreal Engine 5, which I'm sure everyone's heard of by now. A lot of conversation about Lumen and a lot of conversation also about Nanite. We'll be focusing on Nanite and what Nanite allows you to do is to be able to bring in large geometry and process it in real time. So I just used the city park environment, which I'd used in my previous videos from version 4. It took about an hour or so for the shaders to compile the first time opening it and converting it over to Unreal 5. But generally, it works pretty seamlessly. And this is my mesh after it's been imported in. One of the first takeaways to note is that it comes in very, very fast. And here, under our Nanite settings, we can change the proxy triangle count 
to be able to see all the triangles once it's been imported. So we see here we've got 2,554,000 triangles and we're, we're pushing this around in real time and rotating it and seeing it get lit up in real time and it's it works pretty well. I'm on an RTX 2080 and at 1920 by 1080 I haven't done the FPS count but it's looking pretty smooth. And there's some great detail up on that tree. So not really not a lot of work there. About 5-10 minutes of shooting on the DJI and about 20 minutes of trimming it and a bit of tweaking in Blender and we have a pretty usable asset. These are the ones that came with it. You can see the huge amount of polys on this and the detail without a normal map. This is just a texture map on here at 4096 by 4096 and it's that looks pretty good. Let's say I can move a uh, number of these into the scene and start to see what impact that has. So we've got 2.7 million triangle meshes in the scene here. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if I could have done anything better in the comments. I'm going to make more videos like this and be a little bit adventurous with what I'm scanning. But I'm just really getting used to the r 2S and overall impressions are it's very, very usable. And in terms of improvements over the r 2, uh, yes, in the stills, definitely. And the 5.4K video, obviously, which I'm not talking about because there's plenty of videos on that. Uh, do I feel like it's been worth the extra several hundred pounds I paid for it? Not decided yet, to be honest. Uh, the Air 2 has some advantages in that it's cheaper and it's faster. But for photogrammetry, certainly from the images that I've seen and the, the meshes that I've generated out of it, the Air 2S has the edge. Thanks for watching.